Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. Now for the news in detail. The All Nagaland Ad Hoc Teachers Group 2015 batch will continue with their hunger strike. A meeting between the group and the government today was inconclusive. After the meeting between the ANATG and government, the spokesperson of the ANATGT, Bendang Ozekam, informed that the meeting was inconclusive. He also informed that after a meeting with the group's members, the ANATG will continue with their hunger strike. He informed that yesterday the ANAGT had submitted a letter to the Chief Minister and today the group was invited to a meeting by the government. However, the meeting was inconclusive. This is the ninth day of our agitation and the uh, fifth day of our hunger strike. So, yes, over these uh, nine days, and especially within the time frame of the fifth, uh, five days, six of our six of our members have been admitted to the hospital, and of that, uh, three were taken up to the hospital just this morning. Uh, we got the news that uh, one of our female teacher, her health is uh, deteriorating, and uh, uh, we haven't yet had the latest update. But according to the latest update, that's the uh, condition of our uh, one of our female teacher. And yes, yesterday was the day that uh, we submitted the uh, letter to the uh, Chief Minister, Honourable Chief Minister, the Government of Nagaland. Uh, somehow there was no quick response yesterday, but uh, today we have been uh, invited for a meeting. Yes, uh, it's a holiday, it's a government holiday, national holiday, but uh, the government has taken uh, that kind of interest to have us uh, with them for a discussion, for a meeting, for a negotiation, uh, for whatever it may be. So uh, we also thankful at least uh, that you know it's not still a it's not at the point of the deadlock between uh, the energy and the dog so we'll be going in for the meeting maybe in about uh, 20 25 minutes it's uh, almost 12 30 noon at the, at the moment so we will go in and uh, we will hope for the best uh, amicable solution which uh, what the government could accept as well as our general members uh, of the Anaji could uh, come to the term too. So. Bombay High Court on Tuesday granted bail to former Maharashtra Minister Anil Deshmukh in a money laundering case with a surety amount of INR 1 lakh. The Enforcement Directorate had registered the case against him in November 2021 for allegedly misusing his position as State Home Minister for collecting INR 4.70 crore from various bars in Mumbai through some police officers. Despite being granted bail in ED's case, Deshmukh will continue to remain in custody in another case of the Central Bureau of Investigation against him. North Korea on Tuesday fired an intermediate-range ballistic missile over Japan for the first time in five years, forcing Japan to issue evacuation notices and suspend trains as the North escalates tests of weapons designed to strike regional U.S. allies. It was the most significant missile test by North Korea since January when it fired an Hwasong-12 intermediate-range missile capable of reaching the U.S. territory of Guam. Japan and South Korea both called security meetings to discuss the launch. The Japanese Prime Minister's office said at least one missile fired from North Korea flew over Japan and was believed to have landed into the Pacific Ocean. Sirens wailed across Japan as people were told to seek shelter for a North Korean missile launch. Brigadier Dr. B.D. Mishra was sworn in as the new governor of the state on Tuesday. The swearing-in ceremony was attended by Assembly Speaker Matwa Laingdo, Cabinet Ministers Bandeidor Laingdo, Hamletsen Doling, Lamen Rimbui, MLA's Saling E. Sangma, 
Piniet Singh CM, Chief Secretary DP Walang, DGB Dr. L. R. Bishnoi and others. Dr. Mishra, who is currently Governor of Arunachal Pradesh, took additional charge as Mekalaya Governor after Sadia Bal Malik, whose tenure ended on Tuesday, was not given extension. Soon after taking charge of office, Dr. Mishra recalled that Shillong was also a camp zone area during the 1971 war. India participated in the war and defeated Pakistan, he said. The governor also spoke highly of the people of Shillong and its cleanliness. I, I Brigadier Dr. B.D. Mishra, retired, do swear in the name of God that I will faithfully discharge the functions of the governor of Bihalaya and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect and defend the constitution and the law and that I will devote myself to the service and well-being of the people of Meghalaya. Wonderful place. This is not my first visit. I had come here a long time back in 1971 war. This was one one Kamzor area. And then we participated in the war and defeated Pakistan. It's a wonderful place, wonderful people, so good, so clean. I'm impressed, and I thank you all. Every, 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 every person from Shillong, every person from Meghalaya. Thank you. The strengthened party ahead of the forthcoming elections in 2023 in Meghalaya, the Ripoi United Democratic Party today, conducted its general council at Nongbo. New office bearers of the party were elected for the tenure 2022 to 2025. The new office bearers are led by Donbok Kim Date as a president. On the same day, the Ripoi unit declared three candidates who will be contesting from Ripoi constituency. Speaking in the General Council, Dr. Jemino Mauto expressed happiness that day by day the UDB party is getting more recognition and support from the people of the state. He assured that there is no doubt that the UDP will come in power with the support of the people during the up forthcoming elections. The democratic system, the democratic principle, the democratic principle, the democratic principle, the democratic principle, Briefing on Angida murder case, Uttarakhand ADG V. Murugesan on October 4 said further action will be taken after analyzing the forensic report and electronic digital evidences. The guests who were present at the time of the incident have been interrogated and the motive of the incident is becoming clear from the post-mortem report and the statements of people taken at the resort, said the Uttarakhand ADG. As soon as the forensic report comes, the authorities will take further action, he added. देखिए जो ऑन रिकॉर्ड पे जो भी हमारे पास गेस्ट्स का आने का है और जो पिछले जो आए हुए उनका भी हमारे पास मिल गया है और उन्हीं के सब का हम जांच कर रहे हैं और जो घटना के टाइम पे जो भी गेस्ट्स थे हालांकि एक ही कपल गेस्ट थे वहां पे उनसे भी हमारी पूछताछ हो गया है जो अंगिता का नौकरी है वो ओलेक्स के थ्रू उनकी दोस्त ने देख के दिलाए गए बता रहा है 
और उससे भी पूछताछ होगी है वो भी हमारी जांच के दायरे में है पोस्टमार्टम रिपोर्ट है वो जो जो डिजीज है उनके साथ जो जैसे जो हुआ उसके बारे में पोस्टमार्टम रिपोर्ट में क्लियर है और जो रिसार्ट में जो हो रहा है वो हमारे टेस्टिमोनी से लोगों का बयान है तो उस बेस पे हम रिसार्ट में क्या हो रहा है वो हम अंदाजा लगा रहे हैं तो ये ये दोनों हम मिला के देखते हैं तो हमारा घटना का जो मोटिव है वो पूरा कम्प्लीटली इस्टेब्लिश हो रहा है सो so, जो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिजिटल एविडेंस है वो ऑलरेडी हमारे पास है उस पर एनालिसिस हो रहा है और जो फॉरेंसिक रिपोर्ट है वो अवेटेड है जैसे हमारे फॉरेंसिक रिपोर्ट आ जाएगी तो फिर उस पर आगे Mizoram is seeing a surge in the population of rodents since August this year. James Lal Siam Liana, Director of Agriculture, has stated that 572 hectares of paddy fields in the state have been affected, the worst hit being Mamid district where 255.7 hectares of paddy fields from 19 villages have been affected. It is followed by Lung Lai district where 198 hectares of paddy fields covering 28 villages have been reportedly affected. According to officials, the increase in rodent population began in the month of August following the flowering of the Dendrocalamus species of bamboo. James, Lal James Lalri Semya also mentioned that the intensity of rodent attacks varies from 0.5% to 10%, while Moaltum N in Lung Lai district and Tuiram of Mamid district respectively observed total destruction of a single chum paddy fields by rodents. Distribution of and training in the use of rotten tea sites with zinc phosphate and robin besides awareness campaigns about rotten control have also been carried out by the agriculture department since August 2022. On September 28, 2022, the Sir Chip District Agriculture Department carried out a massive rotten control drive using zinc phosphate and robin in Sir Chip Zal Boizao. India's health insurance sector has been growing with three A's awareness accessibility and affordability in India there are six standalone health insurance companies and there are about 1930 third party administrators to facilitate seamless reimbursements in order to reach people in rural areas and for the urban poor the government launched Ayushman Bharat Pratham Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana the largest subsidized scheme covering 40% of india's population at the bottom of the pyramid the contributions of the insurance industry are also noteworthy during these difficult times they able they were able to provide timely financial assistance to the family of about 27 lakh 27 lakh and about 24000 crores of claims were paid with a remarkable speed thus providing the support that was required at that point health insurance numbers are increasing year on year but what pandemic has done is that it has increased the awareness to a great extent now everyone is looking at uh, vaccination everyone is looking at variety of preventive measures etc etc and that has resulted into increased awareness about insurance uh, and we hope in future that lot of uh, uh, families will get uh, uh, their cover and come under insurance for it largely universal health coverage can happen only through a public private partnership so it's all the, the whatever wealth we have in the form of knowledge or a hospital infrastructure or industry, it's all like you know part of government <clears throat> so naturally there should be a public private partnership to see that how we can make every household have an health insurance policy Indian Air Force Air Chief Marshal VR Chaudhary on Tuesday said that the Indian Army will be communicating with China over the issue of any airspace violation along the line of actual control. Speaking at the press conference on the upcoming 98th Air Force Celebration Day, he said to use the Indian Army hotline to communicate with the Chinese in case of any airspace violation or other issues. This engagement has been taken taken place in areas along the LAC said Chaudhary. India is keeping an eye on Chinese air force activities and has increased the presence of radars and air defense networks he said appropriate non escalator measures have been taken in time added chaudhary the primary method of uh, interception for any um, aircraft which may be suspected to be carrying or to be having an um, either an 
hijack situation or what we term as a rogue aircraft, the first way to intercept is with the help of fighter aircraft which are on readiness so that you can signal to the um, pilots on board or anybody else who's taken command of that aircraft that they are being followed and they can be destroyed. So the, uh, as per the given standard operating procedure, the response was to uh, scramble fighters, initially two of them from a base in Punjab and thereafter another two followed this aircraft all the way till it left India. Manipur Chief Minister Anbiran Singh flagged off 12 GPS enabled highway patrol vehicles from the Chief Minister's Secretary today. The patrol vehicles flagged off today included three each for Damanglong district and None district, two each for Gangbopi district, Senabadi district and Tengnobal district. Earlier, five such vehicles for Senabadi district and three for Gangbopi district were flagged off on May 13. Five vehicles for Tengnobal district and two vehicles for Tamenglong district were also flagged off. Speaking during the occasion, Ann Biran Singh stated that a GPS-enabled highway patrol vehicles were being launched to enable quick response from the police to any incident that takes place along national highways in the state. The location of the patrol vehicles can be tracked from the police headquarters. Stating that the vehicles can accommodate a minimum of 10 police personnel, he said the patrol teams will also help stop threats and extortion against truck and bus drivers along the national highways. The chief minister maintained that law and order in the state had significantly improved due to the service of the police with the support and cooperation of the public. As such, there is now no need for security convoys for transportation of oil tankers in the state, he said. The Director General of Police in Charge, Christopher Dongwell, stated 
that the GPS enabled highway patrol vehicles will not only check crime and extortion but act as confidence building measures and maintain better relations between the police and the public. The deputy superintendent of police in Gujarat's Nadiat on Tuesday informed that a mob tried to disturb the Karba function in Keta's Utela village by building stones which injured several people on the night of Mahasthmi near the Tulja Mata Mandir here. A Muslim mob tried to disturb the Karba function in Keta's Utela village last night and belted stones, injuring six to seven people. Sarbanch's car was damaged and stones were also hurled inside the temple, said V.R. Bajpai, DSP Nadiat. According to the DSP, the mob gathered outside the mosque while a Garba function organized by the Sarbanch was underway under near the Tulja Mata Mandir around 10 p.m. So far, around 11 persons have been arrested for interrogation and the investigation is underway. Kal Rat ko, kareeb 11 baje ke aas paas, Undeli gaon ke jo sarpanch hai, Indra Bhadan bhai, unho ne ek manta bada rakhi thi, तो उसी सिलसिले में ये जो माताजी का मंदिर है मंदिर के पास में गरबे का एक फंक्शन रखा था अष्टमी के दिन अब उसी फंक्शन के दौरान यहाँ जो मस्जिद है मस्जिद के सामने कुछ मुस्लिम लोगों का मॉब इकट्ठा हो गया और उन्होंने इस जो गरबा कार्यक्रम है उसके अंदर वादा डालने की कोशिश की और बाद में पथराव किया और उसी की वजह से छः सात लोगों को इंजरी हुई है और यहाँ पर पास में एक स्वामीनारायण मंदिर है मंदिर के अंदर खड़ी हुई सरपंच की कार को भी तोड़ा गया है उसको भी नुकसान किया गया है जो डीजे था उसको भी नुकसान किया गया है और मंदिर के अंदर भी पथराव किया गया है सर कितने लोग घायल हुए और छः से सात लोगों को इंजरी हुई है सर कंप्लेन क्या दर्ज की गई कि लोगों के सामने कंप्लेन यहाँ के जो मॉप थे उसमें सरपंच ने फोर्टी लोगों को आइडेंटिफाई करके उनके खिलाफ कंप्लेन दी है और बाकी डेढ़ सौ से दो सौ लोगों का एक मॉब था उस मॉब ने ये असोल्ट किया था जिसमें महिलाएं और पुरुष शामिल थे अभी तक पूछताछ चालू है और करीब दस से ग्यारह आरोपियों को हम लोगों ने पूछताछ के लिए हिरासत में लिया the 12th Luke Sasong Memorial Volleyball Trophy 2022 commenced today, October 4, at the multi-purpose sports complex in Mokokchung. Subdivision Officer Civil of Mokokchung Longdiba El Sangtam was the guest of honor at the inaugural program. He said that by 2025, India is set to become the quote, youngest country, unquote. With the projection of 63% of the population being youths, sports will become an industry and those who give interest have the opportunity to build a career in sports. In his connection, he said that it's high time that Naga youths take sports as a profession, citing the example of neighboring Manipur, which is excelling in sports even internationally. <laughs> Altogether, 12 teams are participating in the tournament with a team each from Moka and Kohima and 10 teams from Mokokchun. That's all we have for now. For more news, keep watching Hornbill TV.